this time the uh, chair will lay out uh, Senate Bill 1655 and uh, SGR 55 and recognize Chairman Williams. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the system benefit fund account number 5100 is a general revenue dedicated account that was created by Senate Bill 7 in the 76th legislature regular session in 1999. The system benefit fund account was created as part of the deregulation of the electric utility market and consists of a mandatory surcharge on electric utility usage. The Public Utility Commission has the statutory, statutory authority to set the fee at up to 65 cents per megawatt hour consumed in the deregulated areas of the state. The purpose of the system benefit fund account is to reduce the burden of uh, electricity, uh, electric utility costs on low income populations in the state. The PUC has accomplished this mainly through the low income discount program, also known as Light Up Texas. This program provides a discount on eligible utility bills ranging from 10 to 20 percent. In fiscal year 2012, the discount was 10 percent and was offered from May through September. Revenue from non-bypassable fee has regularly exceeded legislative appropriations out of the system benefit fund account, resulting in an accumulating balance. The Comptroller of Public Accounts estimates that the balance available for certification of the general appropriations bill for the 2012-2013 biennium was $851 million. SJR 55 would appropriate the unobligated and unappropriated balance of the system benefit fund to the comptroller for deposit into a special fund outside general revenue. The resolution requires the comptroller to disperse the fund, in the, disperse the money in the fund to retail electric customers as directed by general law. Since Senate Bill 1655 would require the Public Utilities Commission in consultation with the comptroller uh, to establish a system to credit retail electric customers' bills with the amounts necessary to fully expend, expend the balance of the system benefit fund. In other words, members were going to give the money back to the people who've been overcharged. Um, the PUC uh, uh, Excuse me, each entity receiving disbursements under this section would then be required to ensure that retail electric customers through billing for electric receive credits that are in the aggregate equal to the amount of disbursements received under this section, accepted for a reasonable amount not to exceed 2% of all disbursements uh, to the entity for, for administering this uh, section. The comptroller and the PUC would be required to jointly issue an initial report on the progress made in developing and implementing the system and to issue periodic reports on the progress made in dispersing the system benefit fund back to the people who have overpaid into this fund. These reports must be submitted to the governor, the lieutenant governor, the speaker, and standing committees in the House and Senate having primary jurisdiction over electric utilities. Mr. Chairman, I have a committee substitute for Senate Bill 1655 and a committee substitute for SJR 55 that I'd like to send up. Uh, Senator Williams sent up a committee substitute for Senate Bill 1655 and a committee substitute for SJR 55. Uh, we have the substitute before us. Uh, Mr. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. The committee substitute for Senate Bill 1655 would require that the balance of the system benefit fund be returned to retail electric customers in fiscal year 2014. It would also require that the PUC, by rule, uh, it would, requires the PUC to require by rule that the credit amount is clearly labeled uh, on the customer's bill as a refund of system benefit fund fee as provided by the Texas legislature. The committee substitute makes some technical adjustments at the request of the PUC. The committee substitute to SJR 55 would appropriate 90% of the balance of the system benefit fund to
to the new special fund outside the general revenue fund on November 10th, 2013, after the election uh, would take place for the SJR. And the committee substitute uh, clarifies that this is a fund inside the treasury, and it also requires that the balance be dispersed in 2014. I'd be glad to try to answer any questions. Members, uh, you heard the explanation on both substitutes. Is there objection to the adoption of Committee Substitute Senate Bill 1655 and Committee Substitute SGR 55? Uh, Chair is none. Uh, it is so ordered. They are adopted. Are there any questions? We don't have a quorum. I think we'll have to wait. Okay. We don't have a quorum. I lost my count. Uh, are there any questions of uh, Chairman Williams? Okay. We have testimony. I think we have some witnesses. Uh, we'll open public testimony on both uh, Senate Bill 1655 and the SGR 55. Uh, we have. We have. Uh, we got to go in and uh, Philip Oldham, old testimony, please come up here. Uh, we have uh, Mr. John Painter, uh, Bill Moorhead, uh, Mr. Moorhead, Cyrus Reed. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members, I'm Philip Oldham on behalf of the Texas Association of Manufacturers. We represent the, the largest electric consumers in the state and have participated in discussions on this matter, as the Chairman knows, for many, many years. Uh, we support uh, both SJR 55 and SB 1655. It is a principle of TAM to have this money dedicated back to the purposes for which it was originally intended. <coughs> and then we support the notion that if we are collecting more money, we should stop. And getting the money back to the customers on an equitable basis that paid it is, a, is something we're, we're in support of. Any Thank questions? You. Thank you for your first one. Mr. Payne. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members, I'm John W. Fainter, Jr. I'm president of the Association of Electric Companies of Texas. I'm testifying on the bill. Our general long longstanding principle has been to fully fund the system benefit fund to benefit the people to whom it was, for whom the uh, fund was established and intended to fund. However, if, if it is the policy of the legislature to uh, act, enact this legislation and constitutional and people enact the constitutional amendment, uh, we certainly have no objection to that, and our only uh, reservation is to be made, make sure that the PUC has appropriate authority in their rulemaking to make sure that the funds, to the extent possible, are equitably, equitably distributed to those who uh, provided payment to the funds, and that there are no uh, no risk of uh, to the financial integrity of market participants as a result of the distribution. I'll be happy to answer questions. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Finger. My name is B. Moorhead, and I'm the director of Texas Impact. Um, we're testifying on the bills. Um, we believe that the money should be distributed on an equitable basis, but we don't think that you can do that by just giving it back to taxpayers because some of the people, if you were going to be equitable, some of the people who paid in have died since then. So there's no way that they can actually benefit back. The best way to, to make it equitable for the state is to use the money for the, the purposes for which it was intended, which would be to do some project that benefits low-income rate payers. We would also just add there is so much need in the state, and it's I mean, I understand we maybe you're not going to ever fully fund it, but we the church ministries that we work with see people every day of the world who cannot pay their electric bill. And if we're considering what an equitable distribution would be, surely helping the people who need help with their electric bill would be the best thing we could do with the money. So that would be our testimony. 
Any questions? Thank you for your testimony. Mr. Reed. Cyrus Reed, Lone Star Chapter of the Sierra Club. Um, Senator Williams, I signed up against your bill. I'm not against the principle that we should, uh, we have a big balance and we should uh, return it to its uh, original intent, but I don't think the original intent was is necessarily to give it back to the people who paid it. The reason we did a system benefit fund in the first place is we deregulated the market and we said, because of that deregulation, it may be difficult for people that are low income um, to pay their bills. So we're gonna give them a little break. Um, we also said we're gonna have mon money for consumer education so they know about their choices. The third thing we said is we're gonna give some of that money uh, for weatherization through GDHCA so that people can permanently lower their bills. Um, I think those are the three purposes for which we should spend this money. Um, you know, there have been discussions uh, in different committees about maybe maybe what we should do is have a long-term solution for system benefit fund. At some point, it should go away, right? At some point, we no longer should need it. But the balance, what we could do with it is over five or ten years, put it into weatherization, actually weatherize people's homes and help them permanently. And I think that would be a far better solution uh, than just giving it back to, to the, the folks who paid it, some of whom, uh, as Dean mentioned, has died. So that would be my proposed solution as opposed to just giving it back. Because um, there is the need out there and we could actually really help people rather than give them a one-time uh, payment that'll, you know, if, if it's like my family, we'll just, uh, well, I wouldn't apply for Why couldn't they run down to Home Depot and buy some caulk and weatherize their own home? We're empowering them to do that with this refund, aren't we? Uh, they could do that, but I think, again, a better solution would be have have a long-term plan, take a bulk, the bulk of the money, and put it into to weatherization in all the cities. Then it goes to contractors, not to the people. Who yeah, it creates right? jobs. So it creates jobs. All right. Any other question, members? Thank you, Mr. Reed. Thank you. Uh, Brian Lloyd. Lloyd. Lloyd, just identify yourself, who you represent, and you may proceed. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I'm Brian Lloyd, the Executive Director of the PUC. I'm here solely as a resource witness if there are any questions that I can answer. Okay. Any questions, on Mr. Lloyd? There are none. Uh, thank you so much for your testimony, for, your, for being present. Anybody else present who would like to testify on, for, or against Senate Bill 1655 or SCR 55? Uh, if not, public testimony is closed.